Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those who are new, welcome. My name is Monica and in today's video, I am going to do a historical romance reading vlog. This vlog is all the books and I read eight books because I've already read them because I forgot to do an intro. Yay me. Um, so yeah, um, these are all the eight books I read during the historical romance readathon. I did end early so I could post this video in time. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. And without further ado, let's get into the vlog. Hey guys, um, it is, it is early <laughs> and I'm getting ready to go to work. Um, Romance of Mr. Bridgerton. This was a reread and we're, I was rereading it for, um, Historical Hellions. Yeah, no. <laughs> I can't stand Colin as a character. He the way he treated Penelope with such indifference, he's like a frat boy with no clue that he's an asshole. Um, he, th he thinks he doesn't stink and he does. Um, Penelope was, I like her when she stands up for herself, but she had a glow up and that's when, uh, Colin was like, Ooh, maybe I do like her. Did, and I did not like the way he treated her about the whole Lady Whistledown thing. I thought that was really rude. Um, he has nothing to to uh, talk about. And uh, yeah, he's like the historical romance version of a frat boy. I can't stand him. So, someone's walking by. Yeah, no, can't stand the dude. Do not like him. Next, please. <laughs> um... Even on a reread, I couldn't find anything redeemable about him. I, the story itself is fine. Like, I get the story and what it's supposed to be doing, but I can't get over how obnoxious the characters are, specifically Colin. Like, Penelope, I can handle her okay, but I still just know. And I did get through it, and I wanted to, uh, and I get got the audio off my my Libby app so I was able to get through it very quickly and I just can't I just don't like him I think he is just horrible I don't like the way he treated um I don't like I don't like the whole glow up thing and then all of a sudden he's like oh I think I actually do like her he's a rich dude with nothing to do and that's essentially who Colin Bridgerton is someone said this is mid no I think this is low like this is gonna be my lowest book on this vlog I can't stand Colin Bridgerton but I read him I read this because we're going to be talking about it with the historical Hellions decided to start my my reading journey for the historical romance readathon a little early because I wanted to include uh, Colin Bridgerton because I figured that or romance of Mr. Bridgerton I did um I decided to vlog uh, ro reading romancing Mr. Bridgerton so I'd force myself to finish the book <laughs> literally Samantha's right he's horrible there's nothing about him that I like. I mean, at least with Daphne and her connivingness, the way she had trapped the Duke of Hastings, at least she had a motive. He's just there. He's like, he has nothing to do except to exist. If that makes any sense. He's a, so I can't, I can't with with this book. Um, so I'm keeping it unrated. And I'm going to just say, never, ever, ever again will I ever read this book again. So, um, I am, I will update you when I start my next book. Bye. Hey guys, um, it is Saturday morning and I'm going to McKay's because I, when I, uh, put together that new bookshelf, I also, Rosie just, Rosie got into my face this morning, so now my eyes puffy and red. Um, so yeah, when I went to go uh, get my bookshelves uh, put together, I realized there are some books that I had that were repeats or some that I no longer would like to keep on my shelf. And instead of trying to sell them on Pango or something, I'm just going to McKay's because I'm a McKay's that's about, that's a little far, but 
I'm okay with going up there because I like my case. I want to see if I can get some more Nora. Last night, um, I started listening to The Lady Who Plays With Fire. Um, new to me author, I got this book. It's an ALC on NetGalley. And it's about our heroine is named Julia. And she wants to be an actress, but she is also secretly reviewing plays and she saw I think of Othello I think it was Othello it was a Shakespeare play anyway um I feel like all Shakespeare plays that are at least the tra tragedies they tend to be very similar um well at least in themes and stuff um she and her aunt who's really not her aunt go to the the play and they come to find out that someone had double booked their box because the lord who's a scottish lord he um was the first one to get this box and then they uh, and then they resold the tickets because he never comes and he never told anybody he was coming um he sold the 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 box manager sold the tickets to her and her aunt for the season and he shouldn't have done that obviously but so now they're in this situation where they feel like they both feel like each other are the intruder and um it was a very interesting setup there's chemistry already where he touched her wrist when he grabbed her hand because she was walking in and he grabbed her hand over her kid glove and the sleeve of her uh gown anyway and now they met the day after they both feel like the play was insipid that's the word he used so the next day she's trying to mail her review well she's near at a bookstore and um that's where they meet and he right now is holding the book that she had stuffed her review in um that's what's going on i don't really know much about this book i was like ooh, a historical romance that's coming out on audio it's already out on ebook and paperback but i wanted to listen to the audio i thought this would be kind of a fun thing to do so that's why i requested the alc and it's good so far i'm the narrator's doing a good job but i'm not very far into it i do not think this is going to be a five star if it continues the way i think it's going to continue it'll probably be more like a four star but again the narrator is doing a good job and so far i do like the character's as they are getting set up I'm, I'm at the beginning but I have an hour drive to McKay's so I am going to be cranking out this audiobook
guys. Um, I am done with this Susanna Craig book. I'm going to give it three stars. He became a, um, a misogynist. He like, some of the things he was saying, I was like, eh, no, like why a woman couldn't actually be a critic and stuff like that. I was like, yeah, no. Anyhow, I, um, the romance was fine. I just, the audiobook was good, but I don't know. I just didn't, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be, but, um, I did go to McKay's and I did definitely got some store credit and got some stuff back, but I picked up some stuff. Like I picked up Nora Roberts, um, the McGregor's, uh, Serena and Kane. I love that book. And then I found this Joanna Lindsay, and I swear I just bought it for the step back. I'm not going to lie, because look at the step back. It's Fabio. I thought that was so great. And I found this one. It's uh, Duke of Sin, which I gave five stars. And look at the step back. Gorgeous. But also, it says it on the first page. So let me find it. Here we go. Da -da 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 -da. It's here. There it is. It's signed. So, absolutely. And then I found another Language of Love. This is book 44, Nora Roberts. This one is Best Laid Plans. I'm trying to find all of these. And then, if you saw my Instagram stories, I found Spellbound, which... This one, I mean, 10 cents, you can't beat that. This one was uh, published in, uh, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. 1998, this was published in 1998, and that's a short little one. It's like, what? Eating one pages. And then I found this really gorgeous and actually very well maintained copy of the prize, which I love the prize. So, and then I found If the Duke Demands by Anna Harrington. I love this book. So, yeah. I didn't get it for $3.99 at the price I got it for $3.50. But I really loved this book. I thought this book was really well done. I read it years and years and years ago. But I never actually owned it, so now I do. And so, yeah, that's this is what I got from McKay's. And so, yeah, I'm actually pretty... I had more in my hand, but I'm trying to be smart with my purchases. Anyway, so now I am listening to Night in Shining Armor because... And I'm doing this a little early before the readathon, but only because my library hold is about to be yanked. So I'm like, okay, and I don't really want to buy it or wait for it to come back because there's a waiting list for Night and Shining Army's Armor. So I am just going ahead and reading it now. And so far, I, I originally gave it five stars and I'm gonna stand by that. Um, My only thing with this is that Douglas doesn't have a backbone, but She's also been doubted and made fun of her whole life. So I think that is really what solidified people being able to do what they did to her. Um, anyway, she's already met our hero. He came in with his his uh, medieval, well, no, it's Elizabethan garb because he's in Elizabethan time. I have another bit of a drive ahead of me because my case is not near me. It's it's about an hour away, so it's not a big deal. But anyway, I am going to go and I'm going to go ahead and um, continue uh, listening to Night in Shining Armor. And then I have the Historic Hellions and um, Pick, which is uh, Sherry Th uh, Thacker, I think her name is as well as there's a Julia Quinn book. No, it's Lisa Kleypas. Yeah, I think it's Lisa Kleypas. Hold on, I'm gonna look.
Okay, it's not Julia Quinn. It's uh, Worth Any Price by uh, Lisa Kleypas. That one is um, picked for uh, Ravished by Romance Book Club. So I have two more book clubs to pick and to uh, read. Um, and I'm kind of glad we're doing a historical for Ravished by Romance. That was kind of nice change from contemporary. So anyway, that is it for this update. And I will see you when I'm probably when I'm done with this because I have to go home and help with some yard work all right bye it's Saturday or it is Sunday and I finished Night in Shining Armor and I'm going to continue to have it be five stars on my Goodreads it's still a five star read for me I really enjoyed it this is a time travel historical romance um about Nicholas and Douglas Douglas is our heroine and her time period is in the 1980s and so <laughs> and Nicholas is back in Elizabethan time. So um, Douglas goes on vacation with her boyfriend and his really bratty daughter. And they ended up um, going to this church and she had enough of both her boyfriend and his daughter for very good reasons. And after a fight with his daughter, who said some really inappropriate things to her, and uh, honestly, I would have never gotten away with half the things that his child got away with when I was her age. No way. Anyway, um, after there was a fight, they took her purse and left her stranded at the church. And in the church is Nicholas's tomb or sarcophagus or whatever you want to call it. She goes in and she's crying because she doesn't know what to do. She doesn't want to call home because everybody always gets her out of scrapes. She's known as the one who d makes bad decisions and ends up always needing bailing out. And her family's very rich. Well, she's crying and then she's like, I just I want a knight in shining armor, someone to, to help me. And Nicholas comes through from, travels from Elizabethan time to, to the 1980s. And she's she doesn't believe him that he is who he says he is at first until they start to get to know each other. And she decides to help him because Nicholas was set up to be accused of treason after his brother was murdered. And although he didn't know his brother was murdered, she's like, okay, we need to find out who set you up so you can go back. And as they're doing the research, trying to piece together his life and what happened and what happened to his mother after he was uh, executed, um, they end up, while they're doing that, they end up falling in love. And um, after they do the deed, the first time he goes back and she's like completely just like, I, I don't know what to do with myself, distraught because he's the love of her life. And so she ends up going back to Elizabethan time. And when she does, he doesn't understand, he doesn't remember her. And so he thinks she's a witch. Okay. And um, she ends up doing things because she's determined to make sure that he and his family is not taken advantage of and not going to be killed from the person or persons um, who have orchest orchestrated all this mess. So what she ends up doing is like forcing herself into this household and and tailing Nicholas and he's like I don't want you at the beginning um during this part and then he but he knows that they're connected somehow because he feels it because they have a actual physical connection which is very mystical and as Douglas goes through trying to rewrite history Nicholas and her fall in love again was actually very satisfying because it does have a happy ever after so it is a romance because the one thing he kept saying to her is my soul will find yours not my body my soul so take that as you will I really enjoyed it I enjoyed the writing the narrative I enjoyed the plot I thought that Jude Devereaux put into making the book the way it is I love the romance love the side characters so even on a reread I really enjoyed it so I'm keeping it up five stars. Now I'm about 30% of the way through an offer from a gentleman by Julia Quinn. And so far, I'm still loving it. I still love um, Sophia, Sophie and Benedict. I love their dynamic. Um, she is a Cinderella retelling. 
and I love how he treats her. Well, not really. So he sees her at a mask ball, falls in love with her, but he saves her from being essayed. He's off to bring her to his mother's house too, so she can have better work. The thing is, is that there's stuff going on with her stepmother that he doesn't know because he doesn't know who she really is. He doesn't even know she was the masked girl from the ball. But I really enjoy this, okay? It, it's kind of a, it is a good one. And yes, I like it better than Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. I actually like The Viscount Who Loved Me Better than, Roman, than um, An Offer from a Gentleman. Because I love Anthony. I love Anthony. I love Benedict, Michael, and Gareth. They are my favorite heroes out of the entire Bridgerton world. So, anyway, um, I will update you when I am done with an offer from a gentleman. And then, hey guys, it's Monday night, and I finished an offer from a gentleman early this morning before I went to work. I mean, I really listened to it. Um, it's still five stars. We all know that it's. Benedict and Sophie. But the thing that I really love about this book is that Sophie never really changed herself to fit into Benedict's world. She always stood up for what she believed in. Um, and it took Benedict to change his way of thinking in order for them to get their AGA. And plus, Violet. Violet shown in this book with her protectiveness of, of um, Sophie and Benedict and all her kids. Like the way she went up to bat for Sophie. At the end, I was like, mm, chef's kiss, loved it. So that is staying five stars and it was such a good read read. Now I am reading the Ravaged by Romance pick. I think it's worth any price. It's, um, here, I'll put it right here. I am about 40 something away through it now. The angst is there. It's about Lottie. She ran away from her benefactor. Um, trigger warning for essay off page because she, her benefactor was supposed to be her, her fiance and her parents basically sold her. And so he would come, he would tell her what to dress. He, he paid for her school, he paid for a maid, and then he would have her sit on his lap and he would touch her without her permission. But he owned her according to her parents and she just couldn't deal with it and ran. And Nick, who's our hero, he has a tragic past that we're not quite hearing everything about, but he has decided to marry Lottie because he wants her for her own, not to really save her, but because he wants her. And he has a tragic past too. Right now, I don't feel their connection. Lisa Kleypas is one of my absolute favorite authors of all time. I love her stuff. For some reason, this one is not hitting like it should like normally they would. I, the connection, there, it's hot. Like there's a lot of steam in this book, but the connection that I wanted to feel, I'm not feeling it between Lottie and, and Nick. It's sort of lustful and it's sort of like, I'm gonna own you type of a deal. And that's how he is. I want him to prove himself to be what Lottie needs and to be her protector and her champion and not to be some scumbag. <laughs> That's how he's coming off as a little smarmy. There is a scene that was very, mm, mm, where she, where he said, yes, I'm a Bow Street runner and they make their deal and something happens, but he didn't feel bad about it after he learned her past. And I'm just like, yeah, I don't know. It's hovering at a 3.5-ish right now. So hopefully I, it can, something will happen to bump it up to at least to a four, four and a half. So here's the hoping. All right. Um, hey guys, it is Tuesday afternoon and I finished Worth Any Price. I think I'm gonna get four stars. It was actually, it from last time I updated you, it was really, really good. Um, it really picked up. The romance picked up. This is a marriage of convenience, secret identity, and um, but there are some trigger warnings I do need to talk about. The first one is um, childhood essay, um, grooming, and uh, kidnapping, 
and unaliving oneself on um on page i'm sorry i literally just got a text coming in it was a political ad i hate those things i need to i need to find out how they got my number but i digress anyway uh, um yes yeah, so nick gentry is a bow runner and lottie's been trying to get away from this I want to call him Duke. His name's Arthur. And he is so obsessed with her. Like, he was grooming her for 12 years. Um, trying to get her to become the perfect wife and stuff. And yeah, it was wholly creepy because he was obsessed with her. And her parents allowed that to happen. I'm almost like, ugh. Like, more, like, as a parent, I am just so angry over that. But... We, we're, we're, we're going to leave those feelings out of it. Anyway. Um, yeah. Um, I, the romance absolutely picked up. There's a lot of steam in here for Lisa Claypool's book. I'm like, now, is there a lot of steam for like, I don't know, an Emily Rath? No, Emily Rath has way more, but I'm just trying to give you a comparison. So, um, I, there's just a lot of, of steam in the, or spice, I guess you want to call it, in this book for Lisa Claypus. So this is one of her smuttier ones that I've read. Anyway, so yeah, I, I originally was going to 3.5, but I really like how it ended. I really like the the little subplots, and, I, and the romance absolutely did pick up. So yeah, it's four stars. Now I am going to do, um, I think I'm going to do the... So I'm gonna do the Scarlet Scott. Like I'm so interested in the Scarlet Scott book. So, all right. Do you want to be in there? Sure. It is Thursday morning, and I'm going to work. And I have my daughter with me. She and she doesn't get the fact that I listen to books at two times speed. She thinks it's weird. Anyway. It sounds like I'm from the chipmunks. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, we, okay. So yeah, we're getting ready to go and it's finals week. We are now in finals, which is awesome. But, um, I finished, uh, the, okay. Yes. So it is her ruthless dude by Scarlett Scott really really enjoyed it gave it five stars um the ending was satisfying the whole thing was just a lot of fun and it's definitely i i'm starting to love scarlet scott anyway i started oh gosh what was it the shelly thacker book um the forbidden touch the forbidden touch thank you um yeah so i started that and i'm like on chapter one i started listening to it well, she was, and she got in the car. She's like, I hate this. It's making me annoyed. Turn it off because I listen at two times speed. So it's unnatural. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you say about mis about vampires? Um, they're mis they're everyday mosquitoes cosplaying as humans. Mosquitoes cosplays as humans. Yeah. I love it. And I think that werewolves are giant dogs. Yeah, that's, that's the point. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'm going to continue listening to this throughout the day. And um, I will update you when I have something to update. Hey, guys. It is Saturday morning. And I finished His Forbidden Touch by Shelly Thacker, I think her name is. I'm giving it four stars. It was entertaining. A little long, but entertaining. So it was a medieval historical romance. Um... My thing with this one is, it was very predictable, but it was a lot of fun. It's a traveling romance where um, Royce, who used to be a knight, was stripped from his title after killing someone in revenge for killing his family. And um, he's tasked to take the princess from her home to another kingdom for an arranged marriage. Um, and you know what's going to happen between him and the princess, right? Right. So, I liked that he, Royce was honorable, and I liked the, the little skirmishes here and there. And we all know that her betrothed is uh, evil, 
so he must be destroyed and that's what ends up happening of course um it was kind of dramatic in places and kind of boring in other places um and it was wholly predictable but it was a lot of fun so i'm giving it four stars um the one before this in the series though is a time travel romance i did not know that it was about an american who goes back what 700 years i am all about that so i put that on my tbr not just for this i'm i'm going to um go ahead and start the elizabeth Braden book but someone told me that a new barnes and noble uh opened up near my house so i had to run errands at target this morning so i'm like you know what I am going to go over and I am going to get myself a um, book or maybe just check it out. It's a smaller one, but I am excited. I haven't lived near Barnes and Nobles for a long, long time because I would always have to travel half hour or so to get to a Barnes and Nobles. So I'm excited. So I'm going to go in and, and check them out, see what I can find, see if they have a good romance section. Um, I will do some B-roll so you can see if they are good. Um, the Elizabeth Braden is my last book on my TBR, my official TBR for the romance, the historical romance readathon, but I do want to get to the Elizabeth Hoyt book, so I'm going to do the Elizabeth Braden, and then I'm going to do the Elizabeth Hoyt book. Um, I'm not doing the Anne Gracie book. I'm getting kind of fatigued on rom on historical romance. I'm, I'm ready. So I've gotten all my book club picks out of the way. Um, I've gotten my TBR done after the Elizabeth Braden one and I want to do the um, Elizabeth Hoyt book because it's on my May TBR so and then I am going to call it because I'm like I said I'm getting kind of tired of historicals I want to I have a couple things that I would like to read before the end of May is done that's not historical and besides the new Nora Roberts comes out next next week so I'm very excited about that one so come with me into Barnes and Noble and um, I will update you when I am done with, um, or at least halfway through the Elizabeth Braden. Okay, bye.
Hey guys, I finished um, the Lisa Braden book, The Madness of I Count a Ash Afborn, I think that's how you say his name. I am giving it five stars. It was really, really good. It is a revenge plot and he's definitely grumpy and he has a reason to be grumpy. He has some drama. So he decided to seduce Victoria, which is Harrison's little sister, Harrison's a Duke because of stuff that happened with his siblings. He wants his revenge for the death of his of his siblings. And I and love this book. I love a good revenge plot. And this was a great revenge plot. But also, um, the chemistry was there. The pacing was perfect. The writing was so good. I believed their love story. I believed the shenanigans. It was just it was downright good. I would absolutely recommend this one. Five stars all the way. Now I'm reading the Elizabeth Hoyt book and so far I'm only like 10% of the way in but I wanted to update you. I will update you and close out this vlog when I'm done with the Elizabeth Hoyt book. Okay bye. So I finished Sweetest Scandal this morning and I'm giving it 4.5 stars. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I loved that uh, Eve was very self-aware. Also, she was very independent and that Asa was, gave her space that she needed and he was there for her. Um, and she was there for the, him too. I really loved the slowness of their romance because it was pretty slow for a historical because sometimes historicals, historicals can be like marriage convenience and then you get um, some insta love. This was not the case. The hero was a scoundrel, but he wasn't, he wasn't like her brother who ends up being the Duke of Sin, which I've already read earlier this year. Um, I enjoyed her character growth and I enjoyed the romance a lot. For a book that has a lot of darkness in its plot, there's a lot of sweet little romantic moments in this book that I really enjoyed. And I enjoyed how they grew together as a couple. It was really kind of fun to see. This reading experience was very good. I did enjoy it a lot. It wasn't nearly perfect for me because I I don't know why. It it didn't give me the five star feel. So it's 4.5. And if I did like quarters, I'd probably do 4.75, but I only do half, so it's 4.5. Anyway, I highly would recommend this if you like darker romances and if you like a a very independent heroine who is actually very reasonable. <laughs> she is very reasonable and she understands her limitations. She understands who her brother is, which is kind of refreshing. Um, and I really enjoyed Asa. He was, a, this is class difference. He is of the lower class and she is of the aristocracy, which is, I love this dynamic in a historical romance. It is one of my favorites. So th that right there also was very much something that I gravitate towards. So that's one of the reasons why I also love this book. And it was very well written and very well paced. So so 4.5 stars for uh, Sweetest Scoundrel. So let's just go through my ratings. So the first one that I read was Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. Not rating that because it's a reread, but if I had to rate it, it still wouldn't be rated because I didn't like it. And I don't rate books I don't like. Then I listened to the audio arc of the Lady Plays With Fire by Susanna Craig. This is a new to me author. I gave it three stars. It wasn't memorable, but it was good. And then I listened to A Knight in Shining Armor by Jude Devereaux. This was a reread. So I'm not rating it, but if I was going to rate it, it'd still be five stars. And the next one that I listened to, because this is also a reread, is An Offer from a Gentleman by Julia Quinn. This is before Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. And I not rating it because it was a reread. If I was going to, it would still be a five stars. Then I read Worth Any Price by Lisa Kleypas. I'm giving it four stars. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed C. Marcus, um, the Earl of Westcliff in it, but I also enjoyed the romance as it went along. Um, it's not a full five stars, sadly. <laughs> and then I listened to her Ruthless Duke by Scarlett Scott. This is a new to me book. I've read Scarlett Scott earlier this year and last year. And this one is a five star. Enjoyed it immensely. Highly recommend that one. And then I did the Historical Hellions pick, which is His Forbidden Touch by Shelley Thacker. This one is a new to me author. 
and also it is medieval and it's a traveling romance and um, they're both part of the aristocracy but she's a princess and he's just a mere knight and it was a lot of fun. I gave it four stars and I enjoyed it. And then I listened to The Madness of Viscount Athborn by Lisa Braden. This one was such a surprise to me. He's very much this is a re revenge plot, okay? I love re a good revenge plot. I gave it five stars. I enjoyed the writing. I enjoyed the plot. I enjoyed the romance. It was fantastic. Um, we we were brought into the middle of the, the romance, so you could say it's insta love, but I don't think it was. I think it was more lusty and then into love. So, and then lastly, I read The Sweetest Scoundrel by Elizabeth Hoyt, and I'm giving that 4.5 stars. I really enjoyed it. It just didn't have the five star feel for me, but I really, really enjoyed it. So, so anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this kind of long vlog. I didn't mean to make it so long, but I did read eight books and I'm a little fatigued on um, historicals now. So I'm probably going to take a break and read a good romantic suspense because that's what I'm kind of craving right now. So that's what I'm going to do. Anyway, if you've read any of these, I would like to know your thoughts down below. Please leave them down below. And if you made it this far in this video, please leave me a shoe emoji since an offer from the gentleman is a Cinderella retelling. And until next time, my friends, happy reading. Bye. Thank you.